Okay, um, I just want to uh, give a short overview of the launch do daemon and um, how it translates the old boot script um, to the now um, more declarative approach. First of all, um, the start of the old boot script was uh, not so interesting, just some launch functionality uh, to, to launch uh, scripts. It really starts. Um, just um, the, the um, standard in and out port file descriptors are now um, done in the launch daemon directly. The um, uh, cleaning the shared memory and um, the uh, temp directories, I think it's done later somewhere, is um, also done internally <coughs> in, the, in the launch daemon now. Only the actual um, uh, this is um, there's um, a system init section within the launch daemon which does all this basic stuff like uh, initializing shared memory, um, deleting temp, and um, also setting the time zone. So th this part is also internally in the launch daemon now. Um, the read-only case is uh, done later. Uh, we'll follow here. Whoop. Here, so it's actually uh, launching the service of the registrar. Um, then the app server, if it exists, if it, if it doesn't, it does. Uh, it launches he console D at this point, but uh, this is not duplicated in the for the launch daemon, as I didn't see any point in doing so. Anyway, um, the debug server is launched. The package daemon is launched. The net service is being launched, uh, but only if uh, safe mode isn't true. And it go, goes on and on and on and starts all the service in the um, correct order and um, sequentially. It still has uh, even, or uh, used to have some um, sleep times in there to um, make the user experience nicer with the old um, hard drives. Not sure if this is still in there. Well, it's a sleep three in there, but nothing else. Anyway. Um, when you look at uh, the old approach and the new approach, it looks quite similar on the first look. You still have, uh, uh, you, you now just say, I have a service called uh, app server, and um, uh, then you define how to, uh, how to launch it. Um, what you don't see here is um, any dependencies between those services. This is uh, because um, the launch daemon uh, manages to create the ports before launching the actual application. So um, once you have uh, initialized or set up such, such a job, they can all start talking to each other without uh, being launched already. Um, but you can also, if you really need to, um, uh, define explicit uh, requirements. Um, the registrar opens two ports because it also has an, um, manages um, authentication stuff in Haiku. Um, user and group um, database is handled by the registrar, but through a different port. But this is all started, uh, uh, all initialized from the launch daemon directly. <coughs> I've already um, translated or converted m many servers to the new system. If I haven't, they look a bit different. Uh, they have uh, this word legacy here. This means um, the ports aren't created beforehand and other servers uh, could not talk to this one automatically. Is RHC an event related to that? Or Pardon? It's got legacy, then it says on. Is that the event? No, um, the, the on is um, um, you can define events on which uh, the service is being started yeah. or the service is being started. In this case, um, the event is called, oh, this is all um, driver settings uh, syntax, by the way. Um, the event is called initial volumes mounted. And once uh, that is uh, shot, um, the media server will start. This has been added because um, um, it, star it loads all um, so system sound files on startup. And if those happen to be on um, uh, in partition other than the boot partition, it uh, wouldn't find them unless 
it waited for the initial volumes mounted in that. Um, this event, by uh, the way, is not created by the launch team in itself, but uh, by the mount server, because it's the only um, component that actually knows when it has uh, done initializing uh, uh, the uh, volumes, the boot volumes. Um, the only really interesting part happens a bit later. Uh, there's also um, the on-demand event. This is just a sh shorthand for, um, I mean, you could also write this uh, like this. So it's not really a shorthand, <laughs> just an alternative spelling, as well as uh, like this. And this way I could also add uh, more events this is listening to. The um, on-demand means it's not being started at all unless someone uh, starts talking to it. Um, the application which uh, wants to talk to the um, server doesn't need to know, it doesn't even know how to uh, connect to it, it just uh, sets up the B messenger as usual with the um, application signature and the launch team will then uh, launch the <coughs> server um, automatically when it's being used. Anyway, l later you see uh, there's no user land stuff at all, uh, user related stuff at all here. Uh, there's uh, <coughs> just target login at this point, but uh, targets aren't automatically uh, launched. So all, this uh, all what is done by the standard approach is to start all those services and then sit and wait for things to happen. And what happens is that the application server will uh, launch a new session because it has um, detected a monitor and, and offers um, a session login on this uh, monitor. And by doing so, it uh, um, starts this target and could additionally add um, additional data to this uh, target, like uh, which monitor I'm, um, am I using. The auto login is uh, this very simple login application where you don't have to do type in anything on that you don't even see, but you could also have a graphical login at this point. And you can uh, um, overwrite this target with uh, um, in your user, set, uh, user settings. When a new session is started, actually a new um, launch daemon is being started for the user. So uh, if you have more than one user um, that is locked into the system, you have uh, one launch daemon for, for each user. And once this happens, um, this launch daemon uh, loads the user-related files. Wait a second, still trying to find them. Data it is. On a user, uh, sorry. Forgot to open this beforehand. Can you read this? It's quite small? Probably not. And then I have to copy it first because style edit stupidly doesn't allow me to change the size. Uh, let's change it. Oh, I actually may edit this one, but not from this style edit. I have to open a new one. So this looks in comparison almost complicated. You have uh, the tracker on start and the death bar. Those uh, will both wait until the initial volumes are mounted. Then you have, um, oh, scrolling doesn't work. No, it does. Um, you have the male daemon, which is only being started if uh, the daemon auto stars is set in the settings. So it can also read settings files and uh, pass them. And it's not started in, in when safe mode is defined. Uh, where the complex, more complex time then happens below here. Um, you can directly run targets uh, from your settings. Here it tests um, if the first boot prompt 
application exists. It's not available in the, in the bootstrap. Um, and when this is the case, or uh, either read-only or the local settings do not exist, then it will directly go to uh, first boot, uh, launch the first boot target, else it will launch the desktop target. The first boot target will launch, surprisingly, the first boot prompt. And uh, this one will then uh, launch the desktop target directly uh, when you choose to boot to the desktop. Any questions so far? Oh yeah, yeah. the keywords here, target, run, service, yeah. is specific to this format or? No, uh, that's, uh, um, that's all things are made up. There's uh, a service, which is um, a service which, uh, which, uh, which is always running and it's being monitored by the launch daemon. There's a job which is just launched uh, once or on every, uh, every time uh, they are event is being triggered and uh, there are targets which can um, uh, combine several jobs or services together. So that needs documented? Yeah, it's, it's actually documented. Oh, okay. There's a wiki page on the okay. in track and I also covered it a bit in a in news article. Um, yeah, what's what I also uh, implemented recently is uh, that new uh, uh, that you can actually um, talk to the demon. There's a new uh, command called launch roster. <laughs> I hope you like the name. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of choose it. I, I hope that we now have six months of very productive play wars about what the, the yeah. name of thing is. Yeah, probably. So uh, you can just list all um, all jobs known to the launch roster, and you can also list uh, all targets known to the uh, launch roster. And you could also um, this is still uh, it's very simple yet can uh, get information about the, the targets or uh, jobs. In this case, uh, the desktop target uh, consists of the jobs uh, check daylight saving time, first login, update time, user boot script, and so on. And um, there's also, for example, the first login, which is a bit uh, complex, more complex, it's a, it's a job description. It has a condition, which means uh, when the file first login exists, it can be started. And as you can see, it's, uh, the job is enabled, so it, it's allowed to run if uh, the condition is met. It has, uh, it's not running yet, it hasn't been launched, and uh, it's not a service. And it belongs to the target desktop. And if it is being launched, uh, this is uh, uh, what is um, being called exactly has the command and they are uh, the arguments of the command. It looks a bit complex, but it's uh, actually quite simple. Um, in this first incarnation, the launch daemon does exactly what was needed to um, reproduce the boot script and nothing more. The monitoring feature is relatively new, so mm -hmm. you are no, no longer allowed to, um, to kill or you can still kill something like the desk bar, but it won't last for long because it's restarted immediately by the launch daemon. If you really want to get rid of it, you have to uh, stop it. The uh, this job is called like this. And if you want to start it again, you can just start it again. Another feature is um, the on-demand launching feature. If you look at this newly started system, you see, um, or you don't see because it's too small, there's no print server, there's no MIDI server running, and uh, uh, the notification server has been launched here, but I could quit it. And now when I can see it's, or you can not see because it's too small, but if you have good eyes, you could see that it's not running anymore, but you can still use the notify command. And it should have worked right now. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, it did work when I just tried it on my machine. Oh, it's uh, probably because uh, 
this is a, a build before my last fixes, which actually m uh, made this possible to happen. Maybe it works with the print server. It was a missing initialization of a variable, of a member variable. So m sometimes they got started um, without uh, the event, and then the uh, launch team lost track of them. Let's see if the printing stuff works. Server hasn't been started yet. But when I go here and add some printer. can hopefully then see that the print daemon is running. So it's just been started and you don't even notice it and uh, you can still uh, work with it. And you can, uh, can also um, stop the server. Oh, still running. Okay, something is going... Something is not working as it should here. This might be the same bug, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's another one. Anyway, when I kill it this way, it should not relaunch actually because it's a it has a condition uh, and it's uh, only on demand. And there's no demand right now, so it's not being uh, relaunched yet uh, now. Mm, but uh, if I use a printer panel again, it should work and uh, relaunch the daemon. Just have a look, it's there again. So it's not like it would never work. <laughs> uh, okay, so th that's the basic functionality. Probably I've forgotten something I wanted to tell, but that's basically what the launch daemon is doing. Any questions so far? Can I add my own applications to a user app, a editable file? One also uh, no, the um, the user and system files are both uh, in a non-editable section of the system, but you can um, override existing settings or existing jobs um, with your own settings, and you can also define your own ones. Um, this is not possible on runtime yet. Yeah. Yeah. Launch hoster, you just how you make sure that it does add it to the launch hoster? The well, you, you just have to uh, add a file in there in the package that happens to be in one of the launch daemon um, data file directories, right. and then it's automatically picked up at, at startup. I, I think there's even one uh, application that's actually, actually doing this L and launch or something like that. And they didn't even ask me how to do it, <laughs> so it can't be that hard. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the basic idea was um, to be able to, again, um, customize the boot process because <coughs> this wasn't possible anymore with the uh, incarnation of the um, package manager. And uh, the other reason was to uh, allow packages to add their own services at uh, either boot time or when a user session starts. This is yet now both possible. So there will be no user build script anymore? There already is no. Oh no, the user build script uh, is still being executed, I think, for compatibility reasons, because you, you can already uh, customize it to your needs. Mm -hmm. So this is just being still being used as it should. So There's one job, uh, user boot script. Uh, there is it. <laughs> and it's, it will just launch a shell with the user boot script. And there's another um, shell script that's uh, important for user sessions. That's uh, the setup environment script. It's there's nothing really important in it, uh, important in it, but there's some stuff that's uh, still being used. Like, can you can you tell when the user boot script is executed? Is it the last thing, or can it be executed any time? Um, uh, when you um, define the jobs like this without any uh, requirements. Uh, it can be uh, called at any time. Okay. So I can count on some server being up already? No, yeah, but you don't have to, because uh, uh, in this case it's, it doesn't matter if the mail daemon is already having been started, but you can still uh, talk to it in the user boot script and, and will be 
uh, launch in this very second when you start using it. Okay. So you can already talk to it. It's got a message, in fact, it's got a message here. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it will, um, once you start uh, trying to talk to the daemon, to the male daemon, it will launch the male daemon and set up its ports so you yeah. can directly talk to it without um, uh, having to know that it's, uh, didn't launch be it didn't uh, run before. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it, it doesn't do much more than this right now, but there's plenty of stuff I've planned, like um, yeah, actually being able to to add new jobs during runtime would be nice, and uh, improving the launch roster command to uh, to give nicer output. It's the current run contains all information, but it's uh, not really that nice to look at. It's just the B method that comes from the server and printed. It's probably not what you want to see then, uh, in uh, some at some point. Yeah. Mm. I think I've forgotten one thing I wanted to tell you, but uh, that was more or less it. S uh, I originally planned to have a question and answer session afterwards, but I'm not sure if there will be that many, but if you have any questions, please shoot. Sort of a uh, speed improvement to boot time, have you seen? Any? Um, oh, the first incarnation was actually slower <laughs> than uh, than the old boot script, but I think uh, it should be a bit faster now, or pretty similar. It's, it depends, uh, of course, on the speed of the system, but um, Haiku doesn't uh, benefit from an SSD as much as it could because uh, the, you know, of the lower layers and the driver is not really using it up to its maximum, mm -hmm. so it uh, cannot benefit as much as it possibly could. So it's a lot easier to, I mean, because it's, it's much more configuration than the imperative. Yeah, and, and in theory, um, it can now launch all services uh, in parallel, and yeah, it doesn't have to wait on anything anymore. Yeah, so that, that alone should speed up the boot process uh, considerably. Uh, what happens now is that um, the uh, rocket icon should lit up a, a bit longer, but once um, the app server is opening its screen, it should um, get everything on screen much faster than before. Oh well, uh, one uh, thing that I changed is also that we have uh, we don't have any CDDB daemon anymore. It, it's not necessary anymore because uh, there's now an end, uh, there's it's now an, an lookup application. And this is uh, here, and this is only uh, this is always uh, started when the volume is mounted, and it then looks up um, if it can uh, find CDB info for this. Well, we also, uh, and, uh, when it's we automatically close when it's something unmounted. No, uh, the CDB daemon was only ever looking at newly mounted volumes, mm. and if it was a CD, it would uh, look up the info. And now it does this uh, only once and and quits directly afterwards. There was also some um, uh, some reason to develop this um, that uh, s several um, demons or services don't have to run all the time because you actually don't need uh, them. Yes. Like if you, you're not into a MIDI, you don't have to have a MIDI server running all the time. It's now it doesn't run anymore. And um, yeah. Then uh, one thing that's probably also going to go away someday might be the net server. I'm not yet sure about this, but most functionality should probably live in the um, launch daemon. Besides the actual configuration, that would be then be um, a simple um, command line tool that you can run, which would be run automatically whenever a, a link state changes in your network. So cool. So is the plan to, I'm assuming it's legacy, and is the plan to get rid of the user boot script eventually? The user boot script, uh, yeah, you can't get rid of it because it's a user editable file. <coughs> so you could, you don't have to use it. You can delete it and we'll still boot and everything is fine. But it's uh, up to the user how to how it want to wants to use it. You don't uh, have to know about the launch demon at all and can still um, 
use it as before. Was uh, there some pressing reason to introduce a launch um, daemon now? Uh, and you know, and, and don't wait on, until R1 or something? Or uh, well, as I said, uh, the um, boot script could not be customized anymore. It was uh, really it was a huge um, oh, okay. limitation. For example, you, you had no way when you installed a package to, to run it and start it automatically. Okay. Other than um, starting it as part of the user. And we have the user boot script. That would have worked, but it's uh, just a clutch. And uh, also, I had uh, developed an application called Drive Encryption. And it comes with its own login application. And um, it wasn't possible anymore to launch the login application and let this one th then launch the desktop. So um, but when you uh, want to mount your, your drives only when you log in, you have to, do s have to be able to do s something like that. And it's now, I haven't actually transferred the drive encryption yet to this new system, but it uh, would now be possible to do it again. Right, any more questions? Um, do you handle relation tasks? Like hmm? For the user, uh, the user session, do you handle relation tasks? From uh, the... Uh, well this like is... Uh, tilt yeah. Slash, uh, yeah, because in some places you have oh, slash you slash home, but that's for the default user. But other users are open in the... Exactly, in the... In the um, User part, we can only use the tilde or um, dollar, ho uh, um, dollar um, home. This will um, be translated automatically by the launch daemon. Um, because uh, boot home may not be your own user location someday. Um, we still have uh, problems, for example, the, the um, time information is stored uh, in the user settings, which doesn't make any sense, but it's still there and it's also referenced being uh, with boot home then from the uh, system boot script where there isn't when there's no user yet. Or oh, just a system user. Uh, you mentioned dollar home. Is it yeah. just a placeholder or do you actually... I don't... Uh, uh, do you have actually a variable lookup or... I plan to add full and um, um, look up from uh, of environmental variables. They are already known at this point. Um, so it could be done, but uh, right now it's only a special, yeah, special, special case. <coughs> also does not support um, tilde username, the tilde username notation. You might, you might actually want to just write a shell <laughs> You're not that far from it. <laughs> yeah, but it's only uh, well such a tiny, uh, tiny thing. It's not yeah. really that important. But if the need arises, one can still add one. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's it really it's uh, it's uh, grown step by step to exactly reproduce uh, the well the boot script. I had a basic idea of what it should be able to do, but uh, I only really implemented whatever was needed at the time. So it's a bit, I mean, it is a big difference having a declarative as opposed to imperative, which yeah. I mean, a huge difference really in maintenance. Sure, you have a much more um, possibilities um, without breaking, actually breaking the system. Yeah. And um, one thing uh, that I have to tackle in one of the next iterations is the shutdown process, because right now, um, since it monitors uh, the applications when uh, and will restart them, <laughs> there's a, a tiny fight going on when <laughs> the system shuts down. The inverse of a deadlock. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the registrar doesn't allow uh, launching new applications during shutdown, but that's about the only thing that stops uh, the system at some point. Yeah, that I'm not sure yet how to to best solve this. This shutdown process goes completely to the launch daemon, or um, if they uh, if it's divided it's somehow, I'm not sure yet. Mm. Yeah, the registrar actually doesn't know about uh, system versus user applications. It doesn't know about, but it has some crude 
heuristics to, to know, like anything that lives in slash system is supposedly a system. And the system servers, a server, I think, is uh, specially um, handled and, and it also knows just, just yeah. knows some things like the app server that shouldn't kill this one. Yeah. But if you've got event support already, mm -hmm. you, but then you can probably manage the shutdown as well by... Yeah, but it's uh, a bit more complicated because um, uh, as, as I've shown you, we have no um, explicit dependencies between the jobs or, t or services. And on shutdown, <coughs> there actually are, may be uh, real dependencies. And, um, I uh, will try to implicitly detect those in the order the uh, jobs started talking to each other. But I'm not sure if that's enough. No, but you've already got an event system, so if you need an Shutdown script which has the, 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 the off condition. Yeah, um, that's that's true, but uh, there's still the issue that uh, there must be a certain order of um, in in which I, I stop the services. Sure, but that, that you know you, you've got you've got the conditions, you've got the events, so you can effectively use the mechanics of that in reverse. Yeah, sure, but um, I don't uh, really know yet the. Uh, the dependencies between the no, jobs. You, you absolutely, but once you know them, you can... Yeah, sure. You, you once I know them, I, I can just revert the process. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. Thank yeah. you. So, that's it.